Hey, what's up everyone? It's Mir, and welcome to another episode of our new Q&A series. If you missed the first episode, I wouldn't blame you. YouTube seems to have forgotten to suggest it to our audience, but it's exactly how it sounds. You guys pose us some questions and we try to answer them. So this time around, we have a bunch of questions that were posted under our previous Q&A video. So we're gonna go ahead and answer those. So our first question asks, how can I consistently execute GIF's medium punch to hell stab to level two? So what this person is asking is about this combo where you go again, country medium punch down for medium punch, which is hell stab into level two. This is a uh, punish counter only combo. As you can see right here, the link actually works. And the difficulty with this combo is that you have to do down forward medium punch into a double quarter forward motion, which requires a fairly complicated input because you have to start from down forward, but there is a trick to make it much easier. The trick in question here is that you can do down forward as part of the quarter cycle forward motion. So you do down, down forward medium punch, forward, and then quarter cycle forward, then another punch, and it will give you uh, down forward medium punch into the super if you do it fast enough. It would look something like this. You can do this as part of the first quarter-cycle forward or the second, whichever you find more convenient. And this is of course useful for his level one as well, which has the same motion and has some juggles from down for the medium punch. Our second question of the day goes, I always get a DP when I go for fireballs, especially when I'm playing on the left side. Any shortcuts? This is a common problem that many newcomers in particular have with Street Fighter games, because when you try to execute a fireball motion, if you are holding forward before uh, doing the fireball, you will get a DP, something like this. And uh, this is probably what is happening here. Not sure why it's happening more on the left side. One thing that you can do is if you want to ensure that you're getting a fireball, especially when you're playing in neutral like this, you can artificially slow down the motion of the fireball to prevent the input leniency system from giving you a DP. So an example would be to do forward into half circle forward and then punch. And this will slow the input down enough that you will get a fireball, something like that. However, you have to keep in mind that if you do this input fast enough, you will still get a DP. So, you know, uh, you still need to artificially slow it down a little bit, but it's a much safer alternative to just, you know, like doing forward and getting a DP like this. Unfortunately, it means you have to lose some time. You cannot do it instantly, and that's just a drawback of the input leniency system. But this is one of the possible solutions. This is the same for buffers. Like, for example, if you're doing crushing medium kick into fireball, if you're careless and maybe start with down forward, you might get a DP. So you have to be careful even here to do a slow motion or at least let go of forward so that the game doesn't think that you're trying to do a DP. Now on to the third question of the day, which reads, any tools or tips on how to start and maintain offense for a rushdown type character or close quarters pressure in general? I find myself attacking, but then retreating. I don't want to admit to myself I'm a natural zoner. This is a very interesting question that probably will get a full guide later on as it is quite a big topic, but at least I wanna break down the basics so that you get an idea on how to improve on your offense. The first most important thing to remember, and this is something that beginner and even some intermediate players struggle to come to terms with, is that your offense doesn't actually end when your plus frames end or when it's not your turn anymore because uh, there's more to it than just frame data. It's also spacing and your movement that can be utilized to basically steal turns from your opponent. And I'll show you how in a sample situation right here. Let's take a simple example of a light string, something like this. As you can see, Ken is minus one on block. So in theory, his turn is over, but we are at a particular range where many fast mediums and lights don't actually reach. And it's the same for jury as well. And uh, only the longer range normals, like say Cartier medium kick or standing medium kick for Ken, actually connect with the opponent. Because of this, the opponent is actually in kind of an uncomfortable situation if he wants to contest what you're doing. If I try to continue my pressure, say by doing, I don't know, a standing light kick, and my opponent decides to press a button like Cartier light punch, you see how I get counter hit and my offense stops, as the frame data might suggest it's not my turn anymore. However, you'll notice that if I don't do anything, this normal actually completely whiffs. 
And this opens up the opportunity for us to try and actually catch the recovery of this button and um, steal back our turn that way. I'm using Ken here, but rushdown characters in general tend to have a lot of tools to convert from the situation and stick to the opponent. In the case of Ken, it would be something like, say, his medium Tatsu, as you see, I hit the recovery of the crushing light punch there, and then I convert into something that gives me corner carry and Oki. Uh, different characters have different solutions, but this is the basic idea of what is called a space trap. Depending on what the opponent whiffs and what you're uh, ready to commit to this situation, you can actually get some pretty impressive combos started here because uh, you're catching the recovery of your opponent and scoring a punish counter. Now what the opponent can do is that they can press something that is maybe slower but has long reach, like a crouching medium kick. And you can see in this situation, even though I'm holding back, the crouching medium kick still connects with me and is able to hit me. And a character like Jury or any other character with a cancelable crouching medium kick, they can use that to their advantage and start their own offense and put me in the corner. As I've already mentioned, however, that normal is slow, which means that if I instead press something fast, I'm going to counter hit them out of that normal and again, steal my turn back, which means that I get to continue my offense while the opponent takes a counter hit. In this case, it didn't do that much damage, but I can convert into a normal or uh, maybe a special if it's a buffer and uh, get the knockdown that way, push the opponent to the corner and continue my rushdown. Now that we've represented the threat that we're willing to space trap them or even interrupt them when they try to challenge us with something slower with some longer range, uh, then they might just sit there and block. And this opens up further offense on our end because what we can do is that at this point we can interrupt the string early and go for a reset, you know, like we can start the string again in case the opponent tries to press something at the wrong time, they might get counter hit. We can go for a throw, for example, we can go for a shimmy and try to catch them during the recovery of their throw. If the opponent tries to walk back, the low will catch them and you can even use something like a crashing medium kick in which case uh, you can get a uh, drive rush conversion, for example, or uh, just go into a buffer like a fireball, which is something safer. And this makes it very difficult for the opponent to just kind of like sit there and block because you have so many options uh, to basically open them up and even contesting with normals, as we've established before, uh, there are a lot of options that you can use to make it difficult for them to choose the right one every time, as long as you're cycling through them effectively. Of course, this is just a small facet of offense, and I'm not guaranteeing that you open up your opponent every time. Of course, it depends on what they choose and what you've chosen. But keeping in mind that you have all these options to try and open up your opponent will make it that much more effective for you to go on offense. And maybe it will make it so that you're less willing to just walk back and uh, let go of uh, potential pressure that you might have had on the table. On to the fourth question of the day. Hey Mir, I get knocked down a lot against players with good sweeps like DJ. How can I prevent this from happening while also being at a good space to make his buttons with? Thanks. Similarly to our previous question, spacing and movement are really important to find an answer to this. So most characters in Street Fighter 6 have high commitment sweeps that are quite unsafe on block with decently long range. And the idea of these sweeps is that they actually get better frame advantage on counter hit and punish counter. As you can see, it's plus 31 on a natural hit, but if I score it as a punish counter, I get plus 47, which is much better. And uh, the idea is that you want to use these uh, for with punishment, as I was uh, describing earlier. There's a lot of players that however don't realize how risky these kind of sweeps are if you just do them on block and they throw them out because they like the knockdown and they often don't even exploit it the best they can. So just down backing in general against these kind of players helps a lot as you can score pretty big punishes. Uh, if you remember not to just sweep back but do a real punish, uh, you realize that you can get a lot of damage and corner carry in these situations. Some characters, however, like DJ or Chun, which was the original point of the question, have some sweeps that are actually quite difficult to punish from range. As you see, DJ's sweep is only minus six, which makes it quite hard for a character like Rashid to reach with uh, six frame attacks as they're relatively stubby. These kind of attacks are especially suited to stop walk back, as uh, if you're walking back, you're already building some distance, and if they happen to block, they tend to be quite safe. 
maybe a little bit counterintuitively, but one way to deal with these uh, sort of sweeps is to actually walk forward and block as opposed to walking back as uh, you actually will be much closer to the opponent if you happen to block one of those normals. And uh, a lot of people do not react to movement very well. They just kind of throw them out. So that's one way of uh, forcing them to use it at the wrong spacing. You can also uh, do something like walk back first and then immediately start walking forward and block, which might bait them into thinking that you're walking away from them and uh, they just don't have the time to react to walking. So uh, you might be able to use that to your advantage to block them at a range that's advantageous to you. Of course, if you do this, you won't be able to outrange other normals this way, and some characters still have trouble even when they're point blank to connect with a punish as they have stubby normals. So this is not a perfect solution, but it can dissuade the other person from uh, just pressing mindlessly because at this range is much easier to contest right after with something that might not be six frames, so you might not get the punish, but at least you will force them to block something and maybe get your offense started that way. If instead you want to build some distance and maybe play in the mid range and you keep getting caught by the low, say for example, you pressure with a light, you try to walk away and it hits you low. What you can do is that you can backdash instead of walking away because backdashing builds distance faster and you in general move a little bit further away as well. And um, then you are set up in a situation where you might be able to score a whip on it. Even if other normals might catch you during the backdash itself, it's actually fairly safe in Street Fighter 6, as uh, during the backdash you actually don't uh, have any counter hit or punish counter frames, like that, as you can see I backdash and I just got hit, and many buttons have trouble converting into big combos from that far away on natural hits, so it's a relatively safe technique to attempt. Of course, unlike walking, you have to go through the backdash recovery, so if they whiff something that is uh, quite fast, you might not have enough time to whiff punish them, but at least, you know, you're safely at this mid-range against the other character. Depending on the character that you're playing, you might have some other options that are specific to your character to defeat lows. There might be normal attacks, a unique attacks, special moves. So, for example, in the case of Rashid, there's this forward heavy kick, which actually just straight up goes over lows, and you score a punish counter, and then you pick up a combo of some kind here. And um, these are very useful tools because they have specific built-in ranges where your character usually performs best at. Uh, another great example would be dive kicks, where you can retreat and then attempt to go for a dive kick to punish the low. And um, this will dissuade the person on defense from using all these lows, ideally anyway, if you keep punishing them for them, unless they keep doing it, in which case you should continue doing it until they are just losing rounds over and over. Of course, you have universal options like, for example, parry or uh, drive impact. Basically, all heavy kick sweeps will lose to DI. DJ's medium kick sweep is a little bit special in the sense that you have to do the DI fairly early. If you do it uh, quite late, you might not be able to actually hit him, something like that. So you have to be careful about it. But in the case of a perfect parry, uh, you should be able to score a punish uh, with ease. So you can always attempt that. Even if you screw up the perfect parry timing and you just get a normal parry, at least you haven't lost any drive gauge. And in fact, you're gonna get some back. The pushback gets shared between the two characters, pushing them further closer to the corner. So in general, it's fairly safe to attempt. Another thing that you can do is uh, at that range, if you expect them to throw a uh, sweep, what you can do is that you can hold the parry a little bit. If they're not doing anything, say they're walking back, uh, you can convert that into a drive rush and try to approach them that way and push a mix up. And if they do something uh, like any of their other normals, you can also parry those and get some drive back. So it's a fairly safe option. Of course, if you get too predictable with it, the opponent just will start walking forward and try to throw you. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Now let's move to the last question of the day. Can you talk about negative edge and P-linking as it relates to Street Fighter 6? Thanks. Let's talk about P-linking or plinking first. Uh, this was quite common in the Street Fighter 4 days as it actually helps with one frame links. And the idea of it is that you use the priority system that is built into the game, which is the system that makes it so that if you press two buttons of different strength, you get the higher strength button. Like in this case, say medium punch and heavy kick gives me heavy kick. And uh, by abusing this system with a special input, you got to duplicate your input one frame apart, which basically turned every one frame link into a two frame link. And it will look something like this. What happens in this case is that I have a medium punch input followed by a light punch plus medium punch input. 
which the game treats as a medium punch input, and they are one frame apart, and as such, the game duplicates it. When it comes to Street Fighter VI, however, we have a different input buffer system, which actually means that one frame lengths do not exist in Street Fighter VI, not in the way that they existed in Street Fighter IV anyway which basically renders P-linking useless for the most part. What you can use, however, is another technique, which was fairly common in Street Fighter V days, and it's just as useful in Street Fighter VI, which is called double tapping. And this is mostly useful for joysticks and leverless controllers. Double tapping in Street Fighter VI looks like this. As you can see on screen, the input here is duplicated one or two frames apart, which is much better suited to exploit the bigger input buffer window that we have in Street Fighter V and Street Fighter VI. And in general, it is the best way to go when you want extra consistency when executing any inputs in these games. Negative Edge, instead, is actually a very interesting topic when it comes to Street Fighter VI, as this is the first game where you have an option to have it on or off. In game, it is called Button Release Input, and you can see it from the control settings. It's right here. And as you can see, I have it turned on. If you want to switch it on or off, I believe by default it is switched off, you have to go to the options menu, also it'll show you in a second. So in the multi menu, you will want to go to options, then to controls, and you have your player one control settings here, and then here's a button release input and you can have it on or off. The reason why negative edge is so interesting is that just like blinking and the double tapping, it's a way of duplicating your inputs by giving you an additional input, not only when you press the button, but when also when you release it. So when I press down, say light punch, you'll see that I'm holding it down. It actually shows in the input history and then I can release and this gives me another input, but you notice that I didn't get any normal. This additional input that the negative edge grants me only works for specials and supers and other moves of the kind. Uh, I will demonstrate right here that I'm going to hold down Light Punch and I'm going to do Corsicle Forward and then let go of Light Punch and I will get a Fireball. As you can see right there. As I mentioned a second ago, the reason why this exists is to duplicate your inputs and in this way give you more consistency in performing special moves and supers, especially when you're doing them out of the recovery of something. For example, when you're waking up off the ground or maybe when you're doing them after whipping normal, out of block stun, out of hit stun. And uh, the idea with this is that if you perform the move a little bit too early, you will also get an input when you release and thus it makes it easier for you to perform uh, these inputs. These are all great reasons to turn Negative Edge on, especially if you're struggling to do stuff like wake up supers or uh, wake up special moves because maybe you're pressing a little bit too late and you're getting counter hit. This way, what you can do is that you can press just a little bit earlier and thanks to the Negative Edge duplicating your input, you will have uh, more success actually landing uh, whatever it is that you're trying to do when you're waking up. Negative Edge, unfortunately, isn't without drawbacks, and this is one of the reasons why people might want it off, and it mostly has to do with buffers, because uh, when you're doing something like crouching medium kick into a fireball, if you're releasing the kick at the wrong time, you'll see that the wrong special move comes out. As you see there, I have an input for a crouching medium kick into a fireball, but because I released the medium kick too late, I got a donkey kick instead, which is unsafe on block. There's a few ways to circumvent this, like for example, you can just hold down the medium kick button the entire time and then release it after you're done with the string. But some people don't want to deal with this and they just want to avoid getting uh, the wrong special move entirely, so you might want to turn it off. At the end of the day, it's personal preference whether you want it on or off. I personally keep it on because it helps me with uh, charge moves as you cannot really mash those on wake up so I can do them a little bit earlier and still get a double input. And I would suggest that a lot of people that are having the same issue with doing inputs on wake up, turn it on and try it out for themselves. And this is the end of today's video. All of the questions that were answered in this episode came from the comment section of our previous video. So if you want anything answered, please leave a comment down below and I'll make sure to uh, check it out. One thing in particular that I would ask is that if you guys have any questions about EVO or the recent Gamers 8 tournament, I would be very interested in trying to answer those as the level of competition that we've seen is, has been very, very high. And I think there's a lot of very interesting information that we can gather from the matches that have been played the last couple of weeks. Like I said, that's all for today. And I guess I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.